This is an example of logic related to theorems, which often come up in econometrics, uh, maybe more so in later classes that you will, I'm sure, take after this one. So here is two statements, A and B. So A says that three line segments, X, Y, and Z, form a triangle, so something like that would satisfy statement A, there's something like, uh, so here A is true, if they're just like that, then uh, A is false, or not A is true, and then B says that the length of Z is less than or equal to the sum of the lengths of x and y. So in Euclidean geometry at least, A implies B. This is called the triangle inequality. Uh, if we do have three line segments that form a triangle, then the length of one of them has to be less than or equal to the sum of the other two lengths. Um, so we can see in this drawing up here, if we were to spread out x and y next to each other, right, x would sort of come down over here, and then y would extend out past the end of z. So we can see it's true in that example, and it's true generally too. So first, why is a theorem like this useful? Well, it's useful if we find ourselves in a situation where we know that statement A is true. So we know we're dealing with a triangle, and then this gives us some bonus information about the relationship between the lengths of the sides of the triangle. So it sort of says, hey, if you know A is true, let me also tell you about B, which is also true. So it's sort of a way we can uh, get more information without having to figure it all out from scratch ourselves. Now, it's often tempting to see a theorem like this that says if A is true, then B is true, and think that it means if A is not true, then B is not true. So in other words, not A implies not B, this being the logical inverse. But uh, this is not correct. So in this particular example, we can see if A is not true, it just means we have three line segments that don't form a triangle. So they could really be any lengths. Uh, so then we don't really learn anything about B. We just have these three line segments. They could be any lengths. So for example, we could have uh, x here, y here, so they're not connected, they're not forming a triangle, and then we could have a really, really long z. So in this example, a is not true, because it's not a triangle, um, or sorry, we want <laughs> b to be true in this case. Let's make that a little shorter. So we could just have a small z. So we could see b still can be true even though a is false in this example. So it's possible for both a and b to be false, but it's not always true that b has to be false just because a is false. We can see in this example a is false, but b is still true. So if we have a theorem in econometrics that says under these conditions, 
we get this uh, property of an estimator or something like that. Uh, just because the conditions do not hold, we can't necessarily know anything about whether we still have that property or not. We just don't know either way based only on the theorem. Something we do know from the theorem, though, is the contrapositive, which says that not B implies not A. This is the contrapositive, and that is true both here and in general also. So we can see that here, if B is false, that is <laughs> what I drew a minute ago, where we have X and Y, and then Z is a lot longer. And we could ask ourselves, is there any way we could possibly rearrange these three line segments without changing the lengths, rearrange them into a triangle? And we can see clearly that is not going to be possible. Uh, because z is longer than x plus y. So whenever we have a situation like this where b is false, or in other words, where the length of z is longer than uh, the sum of the lengths of x and y, a will also be false. It's not possible to form a triangle. So this is also useful if we have a theorem in econometrics and we happen to see that the conclusion of the theorem is false, then from that we can learn that uh, the assumption that led to that theorem is also false in that case.